today's episode of the One Chart at a Time video series, we are going to talk about two different chart types. Both can be used to compare categories in your data. We are going to start with the gauge chart. The gauge chart looks just like the gauge in the front panel of your car. And then we're also going to talk about the bullet chart, which was developed by Stephen Few. The bullet chart is more of a rectangular version of the gauge chart. And as you'll see in today's discussion with Yo-Yo Zhou, who's a freelance data journalist, there are some perceptual challenges with the gauge chart, but there's also some ways in which you can modify and expand both of these to help you compare different categories. So I'm gonna turn it over to Yo-Yo so you can understand more about the gauge chart and the bullet chart. Hi, John, thanks for having me. Today, I'm going to introduce to you not just one, but two chart types. These two charts, I believe, were invented to serve the same purpose, but the actual use cases show that they are designed for quite different audiences. The first one is a gauge chart or a meter chart. Um, you can see the gauge chart on paper or on screen, and you know this is a, 2D, a direct 2D replica of the real life object. Um, it focuses on the status of the subject of interest over a one-dimensional measure. Um, the gauge is, or a meter, I would say, is a more common daily object when, for example, when you're pumping gas into a bike, we looked at this little meter attached to the pump to figure out if the tire pressure is correct. Um, when, step, when stepping onto the scale in your bathroom, uh, let's just assume it's in the bathroom, um, you, you, if you've ever had a scale that's not digital, you will notice that um, there is this meter in the middle of the scale and there's a needle pointing to some figure and that tells us how much we weight. And when we make a 2D chart, we replicate the range um, of the measure and the dial that falls within it. And there's one more thing that's missing. Every time when we take a read over this meter, we are making a judgment. Uh, we are making, we are measuring against an invisible threshold. We know that we can stop pumping gas if the tire pressure goes past the threshold and for for the for the scale if we uh if the if it says it doesn't go through or go over a certain threshold then we can feel happy about our body or our diet this unspoken threshold is not designed into the 3d physical object but it exists in the 2d replica of it and this is often the point of the chart now think about this. What if the meter on your gas pump is replaced by a bar chart? In this case, the dial will be replaced by a bar that, grow, uh, that grows from zero to the actual level of the pressure of the tire. And, and there's another fixed bar behind it that clearly marks the threshold indicating the target tire pressure. Um, when you read this chart, you focus your attention on whether the top bar, the current reading of the tire pressure, goes across the bottom bar, um, the target pressure. And this combo of two bars makes it a bullet chart. As you see, the bullet chart is an abstract, simplified form of the meter or the gauge chart. It's much easier to draw both by hand and by the computer. It's less intuitive because it's not a meter. And can you imagine the meter on your body weight scale uh, is also replaced by a bullet chart? I think once you get the idea, it makes a lot of sense. Let's look at a real world example of the gauge chart. Here you can see the election just ended in the US. We have got a winner. Uh, now we can talk about this famous or infamous election needles used by the New York Times to predict the presidential winner in three states on the election night. And for now, let's just focus on the top three charts. They are the gauge charts. They show the actual winning margin at a time when the votes are being counted. And they are pretty effective in that we can see when the mar where the margin stands right now by looking at where the needle is. And uh, what this means 
by looking at where the labels are on the background. Um, the Times even set up some expectations by pointing out the past two elections margins with the dashed lines. And the message is pretty clear, I think, and I quickly got it. Now one might ask, can this be replaced by a bullet chart? Well, I think yes. In fact, we're so used to seeing the two-party election results in a head-to-head -head bullet chart format that some newsrooms try to use the meter with a needle as an alternative to a boring or like standard election result map. The US election requires the presidential candidates to get 270 elect electoral votes to win the election. And the standard top bar chart between the two party candidates to me is a combination of two bullet charts. Um, split apart, one bar always tries to reach the threshold of 270. Finally, I have two tips for anyone who tries to make such a chart. Um, in addition to the range of possible value and the dial or the needle, you should always try to make it clear or at least indicate what is your threshold. This is the intention of the chart and it is the responsibility of the chart maker to communicate the intention to the readers visually. And the second tip I would give is when you're making a decision whether you should choose a gauge chart or a bullet chart, I think the key thing to consider here is who's your audience and what is your intention again. Uh, if you think your audience can understand a bullet chart, maybe the bullet chart is the right, the right approach, or maybe your audience would prefer a more intuitive and a figurative presentation of the data. And then this, in this case, a meter works better. Another thing I would say is a gauge chart appeals or a meter chart appeals to emotion much more than a bullet chart. And perhaps that is what you want. Thank you. And thanks to Yo-Yo for that great explanation of these two chart types. Again, there's always a trade-off when you are trying to visualize your data based on your data, based on who you are communicating with. So come back tomorrow and we are going to continue our discussion about visualizations that can be used to compare different categories. <laughs>